2311 Racing is in a very weird state at the moment. On one side of the garage, you have one driver in Tyler Reddick who just won his very first race with the team. On the other, you have Bubba Wallace at arguably the lowest point of his career. It's a very complex situation over there, but since we haven't done a video on 2311 in almost two years, I figured this would be the perfect time to revisit. This is Revisiting 2311. 311 racing. Tyler, I appreciate you joining our availability, man, but I think you might be on the wrong, you might have entered the wrong media availability <laughs> session. Uh, yeah, I, actually, I don't think that he did. Um, I'd like to announce to the media that uh, <laughs> today I would like to formally announce Tyler Reddick is part of a future member of the 2311 and Toyota racing family starting in 2024. So, hi, buddy. Hey. What's up? What's up? Thanks. Surprise? Surprise. Yeah. Considering that Tyler Reddick was in the middle of his best season with RCR, this news was certainly a shock. The duo had came up through the NASCAR Xfinity Series together, winning the 2019 Xfinity Series Championship. Then when it was time to move up to Cup, the team remained patient. In his rookie season, he had a decent one, scoring three top fives and nine top tens, but 2021 was the clear next step forward another three top fives, but this time 16 top tens a pole and made that season's playoffs. 2022 showcased that patience does eventually pay off. Tyler Reddick was running up front consistently week in and week out it seemed, but just needed a little lady luck. It all came together during the 18th race of the season at Road America. Two and a half years of hard work finally paid off as the team was able to cross that bridge and score their first victory. Eventually, this turned into a multiple win season with two more victories at Indianapolis and Texas. So when this news dropped on July 12th that he was leaving RCR, this came nine days after his first career victory. It was inevitable that someone was going to eventually ask why. I wouldn't say this was quite a, it shouldn't have been a total shock to RCR. You know, as we were navigating what the future would look like uh, a while ago, you know, we, we said that after the option was up in, in 23 and 24 and on, um, you know, uh, you know, we were not sure that it, it a while ago, you know, we were not sure if we were going to return and that we were going to figure out what light ahead. So um, this shouldn't have been a true shock to them. Um, but, you know, uh, it's out there and everyone has the information now and now we all will collectively figure out what, what do we do going from here. At first, the agreement was for Tyler Reddick to drive for 2311 beginning in 2024, but with the signing of Kyle Busch a month later, eventually RCR and 2311 were able to agree to a buyout, getting Tyler Reddick out of a lame duck season and into the 45 in 2023. The first few races of the season were very rocky. Now granted, we haven't even ran a quarter of the races yet. But after the first three races, Tyler Reddick was sitting outside the top 30. I'll admit, I panicked a little bit asking on the NASCAR Weekly Podcast, hey, what the hell's going on? But what was going on was typical of Tyler Reddick's career simply bad luck. The next three races that followed showcased the team's true potential. With only a best finish of 15th at Las Vegas, they were looking to turn it around quickly. A third place finish at Phoenix, followed by a fifth place finish at Atlanta in a race where he wasn't even expected to go the distance because of health concerns and you have a major jump in the points from 33rd to 18th in just two races. But the cherry on top of this three race stretch was the most recent race as of this upload at Coda, where the 45 team stole the show, leading 41 of the 75 laps en route to his first victory with 2311. It's amazing, 2311 and how fast we're growing and how, how much we're doing together. It's forward together on this program and it brings, brings me a little bit to be choked up. I was hoping to be back in that car, but it's in good hands. And it's a great team, and I love racing with those guys. Tyler Reddick, a two-time winner on the road courses of the Cup Series last year. Finished top ten in both Coda races. Pressure here, we're back to the line. Three of his four wins come on the road course. Tyler Reddick masters Circuit of the Americas. That's my boy. That's my boy. Hey, that is a monster win, buddy. Thank you. 
Kurt Busch getting choked up over seeing his old team score a victory is both heartwarming yet heartbreaking at the same time. At least it's great knowing he has strong ties within the team still, as his role within the team, at least from the outside perspective, seems to be more of a driver coach slash mentor role. That'll certainly assist in helping Tyler Reddick propel to the next level, if he ever does, but right now, it's looking very good. Unfortunately for his teammate and the longest tender driver within the team, Bubba Wallace, he had another weekend to forget on a road course, DNFing from what appears to be a brake failure issue. He blew by two other cars before hitting Kyle Larson, which reminds me that Larson did have a similar incident on the Indy road course last year. So it's not like we haven't seen this type of incident before. This is unfortunately what we've been accustomed to with Bubble Wallace and 2311 racing. They're extremely inconsistent during the beginning of each season, only to pick it up a notch during the second half. Whether it's Bubba Wallace's shortcomings as a driver or 2311's inconsistencies as a team, it always seems during the first half of each season, something goes wrong, making it a bad combo. Which is why I personally didn't have Bubba Wallace making the playoffs based on how the first half of the season would go. Now the way Bubba Wallace reacted to this DNF has many NASCAR fans questioning where his head is at. There he is, Bubba out of the race, unfortunately. Frustrated. You know, too much damage on that car to continue. Um, broke toe link in the rear and then oil on. Just uh, trying my hardest not to go down that slippery slope of self-doubt right here. Two weeks in a row making rookie mistakes, six years in a cup, need to be replaced. That last quote from Bubba was certainly shocking. I get it, he's a driver who wears his emotions on his sleeve. At the same time, it is extremely shocking to hear a driver say live on national TV that he needs to be replaced. Just like his teammate, Bubba Wallace's first two races of 2023 ended in DNFs, but at Las Vegas, because of a few cautions falling here or there, he was able to score a top five finish. Unfortunately, the last three races ever since have been a decline in performance compared to Tyler Reddick. Begging the questions, can this team put together a consistent first half to the season, and most importantly, can Bubba Wallace get out of his own head? That 23 ride is one that other drivers in the garage area think they could succeed in. I'm sure Bubba Wallace recognizes this, and only time will tell if Tyler Reddick's win is either a good or bad thing for Bubba in the long run. In conclusion, 2311 is in a very weird state. Tyler Reddick seems to be on the rise, while Bubba Wallace is at one of his lowest points. Let me know in the comments how you feel about 2311 racing. Is this a team on the rise? Was this just simply a flash in the pan? Is Tyler Reddick a true championship contender? And can Bubba Wallace eventually turn it around? Only time will tell. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.